Hi Leo, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your January 16th to the 31st, 2022 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration, and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. So let's see what the tarot has to say, Leo. January 16th to the 31st, 2022, Leo. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides show me for way. Angels and spirit guides show me for way. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. At the bottom is our rooted self. The left hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right hand side, the public arena, the public self. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see what the tarot has to say. We have the hangman and we have temperance. Temperance is Sagittarius energy coming through. So if we have Sagittarius in our natal chart, that's coming through very powerfully here at our root. It's also ruled by the planet Jupiter. So that's going to come through very powerfully as well. We have the sun, which is brilliant. And we have the Ace of Wands. So there's a gift coming through just for, for us from God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe. Then we have in our emotional self, we have the Knight of Swords and we have the Five of Cups. We're going to be rather reactionary to things. So we kind of want to step back a little bit emotionally. So just be mindful of that. We have the air sign energies here. So this is Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. I wouldn't be surprised if somebody tries like emotional manipulation on you in air sign energy, you get contacted by somebody kind of like out of the blue. So just be, just be aware of that. Mm -hmm. Page of Wands, this is us. We definitely take this gift. Do we feel like we take it as much as we actually do? No, we don't. It would be more if we have the Page of Wands here and the Ace of Wands here. We'd feel like, oh my gosh, yes, I take this gift. Well, let's see what's our next card. Yeah, the Six of Swords. We're not taking it. The the way that... Okay, so if these were from the same deck, we would definitely feel like we were taking it and we knew that we were moving forward in this in this gift because they're separate, because they're from different decks. We're going to be taking the gift, right? But we're not going to know that we're taking the gift. I hope that makes sense. Let us see what energy we need to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides show me clearly. This is the king of swords, air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We need to be mindful of manipulation through words, manipulation through somebody who sees things quite differently than we ourselves see things. So just be aware of that. And this is somebody who's going to be like, well, prove it, just show it, you know, and they're going to say that they want facts. They, they don't necessarily want facts. They just want to kind of box you into a corner. 
Then we have our chakra energy. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. And this is peace. This is the crown chakra. During this time, we need to embrace and crown ourselves with peace because that is going to be one of the most important things for us, just to be able to move forward in peace, in harmony, in an understanding of ourselves and what we want and what we need and where it is that we're headed. This is a time where we look at things and just kind of visualize a crown being put on our head. And when we think of that crown being put on our head, what are we crowning ourselves with? Are we crowning ourselves with heavy lead weights, like, you know, that we could never possibly lift our head with? Or are we crowning ourselves with love and acceptance and joy and, and beauty and understanding? So let's look at this time, astrologically speaking. So we start off on the 16th of January with the sun conjunct Pluto. Leo, we are ruled by the sun. So this time comes through very powerfully. Anything that has the sun in it shines very powerfully with us. Now, the sun conjunct Pluto brings deep and intense emotions to the surface. We want to expand and better ourselves. We're not going to be satisfied with the easy way, with the kind of way of less resistance or kind of, you know, just coasting by. We really want to excel. There is also amazing willpower here to be harnessed. So if we can do that, the choices we make, the way that we move forward, this can be life changing this day. This day can really set us on a course that we never expected or move us in a way that we hadn't anticipated. The 17th of January has the full moon, the wolf moon in Cancer. So that's going to be quite powerful. And another video will be done on that. The 18th of January has Uranus going direct. Now Uranus, do we have Uranus coming forward powerfully here? No, we don't. So Uranus going direct. Uranus went retrograde on the 19th of August. When Uranus goes direct, okay, it takes when, okay, so I'm getting ahead of myself. When Uranus is in retrograde, it takes our inner challenges and echoes our outer, our, our outer challenges. So what we're going to find here is that we are confronting one challenge after the other. And if we step back and looked at it, we'd be like, oh my gosh, they're mirroring each other. Oh my gosh, you know, they're, they're connected. Now that we're going into, now we're going direct, we're going to see things really start to settle out. We're really going to start to see things come to this like calm place and be able to move forward the, the way that we want to, or with much greater knowledge, much greater wisdom than we had originally thought we would have. Now, on the 23rd of January, the sun is conjunct Mercury retrograde. Now, again, because we're ruled by the sun, this energy is enhanced. Now, this is a fantastic aspect for artists and for people who are seeking a creative outlet in their lives or a new way of moving forward, looking at things differently, looking at things outside of the box. It's like, well, why not? You know, why not do this? Why not open up this road? Why not walk this way? Now, because Mercury is in retrograde, there can be some sort of frustration around the the conception of ideas and the giving birth to them and bringing them forward. Don't let this get you down. It'll be very easy to let it get you down because it'll be like, oh my gosh, it has to be just like this just now. No, calm down, step into it and then move yourself forward the way that you want to C communicate with yourself, you know, talk it out, write it out. If you journal, you know, connect with the mind, connect with the activity of the self, like, you know, connect with the body and see where it leads you leads you. On the 24th of January, Mars enters into Capricorn. If there is anything that you want to conquer during this time, this is the time that we can conquer it because Mars is the warrior aspect, right? The warrior energy. Capricorn is astoundingly practical. This is the day to get things done. The 24th, you know, if you need to do a good kind of like winter cleaning of the house or, you know, a good kind of decluttering of your mind space or like, you know, really going after something work-wise or personally or, you know, whatever it is that you want to do, this is the day to do it. The 26th of January, Neptune is squared Lilith. Now, this is a very powerful alignment. Neptune, also known as the Lord of the Invisible Kingdom, has us looking at our dreams and our heart's desires, while Lilith has us looking at our darker fears and our doubts. Now, this can make us feel overwhelmed. So we're looking at our doubts and our fears around our dreams and our dreams are so prevalent to ourselves on this day. If we haven't taken the time to look at our doubts and our fears, if we haven't stepped back into the energy of becoming, this can be very overwhelming. Yet this is going to be a very empowering time for us because it's going to be a time where it's like, okay, this is what I'm afraid of. I have to be open and honest with myself. This is the way that I'm moving forward. Go for it. Go for it now. And that's the energy that we really need to kind of lean into. Just a sense of I'm going after it. I really am. The 29th of January has the sun sextile Chiron. Now this aspect shows us our wounds, shows us our wounds in our strength. 
So this is going to be a time where we are forced to really face what we might not want to face, what we had thought of, okay, these are my strengths. This is where I have everything going beautifully. And yet now we're shown our wounds. Now we're shown our chaos. Now we're shown our hurt. And that's going to be really important for us to say, oh, okay, now I can, now I can strengthen me more. Like it's almost how unstoppable can I become? How powerful can I become? How, you know, tremendously driven am I? The 29th of January has Mercury also retrograde has Mercury retrograde conjunct Pluto. Now this makes us greatly intelligent, deeply curious because of retrograde, we're going to be kind of all over the place. So just know that we can be very scattered during this time. The 29th of January also has Venus going direct. Now this brings, this brings us out of the challenges, the challenging cycle that we have had in love. And Venus went into retrograde on the 19th of December. So we're coming out of a challenging love cycle. And this has us looking at what we love and why we love it with really new eyes and new openness and new honesty. The 30th of January has the sun again amplified because of us squared Uranus and people can find us a bit abrupt and a bit provoking during this time. We're going to be rather provocative and we're going to find people abrupt and a bit provocative during this time. So just be mindful of it. Everybody's kind of getting on everybody's nerve, but this is because we are so very driven and we are so very driven to do things our own way, to stand out, to let ourselves really express and let ourselves really move forward. The hangman, we're seeing things so differently than we have before. Also remember that the hangman very much represents the, the, the wisdom that Odin got, but the sacrifice also, also that Odin had to make, right? When he hung himself from the tree, hung himself upside down and looked at the world differently. And then he got sight. You know, the, the ravens Hunin and Munin thought in memory, I believe, or something like that came, came forward and he lost his eye, but he gained so much more. So there's going to be some sort of loss that we go through in order to gain so much more. We're not seeing the world differently just because we wake up one day and see the world differently. There's going to be this either tremendous sense of, of shift, of change that we've been feeling in ourselves for quite some time, this tremendous sense of, you know, needing to move forward in a different way, in a different direction, a powerful sense of where we need to be, of who we are, of where we want to be for ourselves. And it brings us to temperance. It brings us to having a deeper balance within ourselves, the subconscious and the conscious coming together, the insight and the understanding leading us forward. There's there's going to be so much of an harmonizing of ourselves during this time because we're looking at things so differently. And inwardly, we are so blessed if we let ourselves see it, if we let this energy shine forward, if we let ourselves embrace our joys and our happiness and what we love and what we want and you know who it is that we truly are, we will see these blessings just shine forward within us so readily, so beautifully that this is really a time where it's like, look at your blessings, look at everything that you've accomplished, look at everything that you are, even if we're going through a really dark night of the soul, right? There, there are, there's beauty within us. There's beauty within us. There's dreams that are guiding us. There are things that we are seeing about our world and ourselves. And maybe it's to kind of step back. You know, our world is all about this endless rat race. It's all about more and more and more. I mean, Lord knows I am most guilty, not most guilty, but I am definitely guilty of consumerism, right? And there's just this sense of if I have more, I will be happier. And when you're in a funk or in you're in a bad place, that can really get to us and be like, oh, wow, look how easy it is to shop from my phone or oh, wow, look how easy it is to get that dopamine high from more likes or more this or more that on social media. And what we're going to be seeing here is a call to be connected with our earth and our sun and ourselves and who it is that we are and what it is that we want and to let the radiant brilliance of us move forward. A simple life does not mean a wrong life. A simple, simple joys do not mean bad joys. What it means is that we really start to embrace who we are and really start to let that shine forward. Will people try to rob us of that? Yes, because it's something, first of all, so alien to our world to be content with who we are. The people are going to, to start to knit, to start to pick, to start to say, you can't be happy like that. And then as we connect more and more, with our own happiness, with our own wisdom, with our, you know, connection to divinity, to connection to the magic of the world around us, the sunset, the sunrise, you know, we're going to start to really call in the passion and the power here of the Ace of Wands. This is God, source, spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us this gift, handing us this gift of passion and creativity and insight and ideas and saying, this is why you get out of bed in the morning. You know, this is what you're working for. This is what you're going after. It's this fire. It's this insight. And it brings us 
to the Knight of Swords. We can be a little bit reckless. When all of this comes in, we're emotionally going to say, that's it, I'm charging after it, nothing can stop me. And we have to kind of step back a little bit, embrace our throat chakra, really be mindful of our words, how we're connecting, how we're building, how we're communicating what it is that we want with everybody that's around us, with ourselves. And then we start to charge forward. And this has us at our heart, our heart and our mind are coming together. And we're starting to see ourselves as the hero of our story. We're starting to see ourselves forge a path, make a connection, move forward in a way that is extraordinary, that really opens up the doors for us, that leads us to a place that we hadn't imagined that we could be. And it brings us to the Five of Cups. We have to stop looking at all our failures. We're going to do that to ourselves, especially emotionally. We're going to look at everything that isn't, not the beautiful love that we have standing beside us, you know, standing behind us, the Two of Cups. The Two of Cups is a minor arcana lover's card. It's the connection of love. It's the connection of the heart. It's the connection of brilliance. It's really opening up our passion for us. And the Three of Cups is everything that falls apart. And yeah, life falls apart. Things fall apart. Nothing is made forever. It just isn't. And to come to terms with that is, is absolutely terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. But it is also so very powerful to really embrace our hearts and our souls and ourselves and to say, I have failed. I have erred. I have fall into pieces. I have stood strong when maybe I should have bent. I have bent when I should have stood strong. And now I'm looking at that and I'm looking at me and I accept my story. I respect my story. I respect myself, but I don't have to live in the what ifs anymore. I turn around and I embrace my blessings. I embrace my connection. I embrace my unity. I embrace my healing. It brings us to the page of wands. And this is us. We're the student here of good news, of communication. And again, good news and communication, it's communicating the good news to move forward. It's communicating the passion and the power that is within us, that is guiding us towards so much more, that is moving us towards something we hadn't expected. This is also childlike energy, right? This is, or can be child energy here. This is acceptance of our inner child. This is acceptance of our passion that we greatly desire. This is an acceptance of the fire and the brilliance that is us opening up the door leading us to so much more. The page of wands comes in in the public arena. We are a student of where we want to be. We're looking at things with new eyes. We're going to be seeing things and being like, you know, has that always been like that? You know, did I miss something before? Did Could I always do that? You know, type of thing. Like, no, I couldn't possibly. And it's going to be like, yeah, you can. And that's going to be amazing. It moves us to the six of swords. And here it says, explore, discovery, moving on. And that's what we're doing. We're taking our knowledge. We're taking our understanding and we're exploring, we're discovering, we're moving on to so much more than we thought we could be moving into. So much more than we thought we could have. Will the waters be scary? Yeah. Will the emotions run deep? Absolutely. Will we be doubting ourselves? Yeah, of course we will. But are we still going to go? Yeah, it's an adventure and we have to go after it. There's such curiosity here. There's such a sense of, I need to go after this. I need to embrace this. I need you know, such a brilliance, such a beauty within my life. And I'm not going to get it if I don't take this first step. It moves us or I don't continue walking forward. It moves us to our subconscious energy to be mindful of and it's the Prince of Swords. It's that rashness. It's that, you know, boldness coming in. It's that sense of, I don't need to know. I'm just going to go and plow through and, and get it done and it's going to be right. And I've never going to research or understand anything about it before. You know, it, it doesn't work that way. And if we have that type of person coming into our lives, which I do think that somebody like this, somebody who's just reckless is going to come in and they're going to have a heart connection with us. We're going to have to be very mindful of this during this time. It moves us to our subconscious chakra energy. And that is abundance. The root chakra at the root of us is abundance. At the root of us is prosperity and success. And that is beautiful. Our subconscious rooted energy is the magician. There's magic to us as above, so below. As we think it, so it becomes. We're standing before the altar of our existence and we're calling forward wealth. We're calling forward prosperity. We're calling forward success. And there is such power that is guiding us, such brilliance that is becoming a part of us that we have to be very mindful of our minds. What are we thinking? What is the narrative that we're telling ourselves? What is the story that we are connecting with? And how is it leading us forward? Where is it leading us to? What is it that we desire within our lives? That becomes the game changer here. The magic is within us. It is around us and we're calling it in. How do we accept it? How do we embrace it? It moves us to our subconscious in ourself. And that is the death card, Scorpio energy. This is the dying way of the old self, the rebirth of the new. 
This is intention. This is ideas. This is strong Pluto energy, right? In our subconscious, a sense of opening up new doors, a sense of moving forward, a sense of I'm not the same person I once was because I am blessed. Because I walked through the fires, you know, because I was forged, because I saw, and I was able to take my blessings. And it moves us to our subconscious emotional self. And it's the Ace of Wands again. The Ace of Wands comes forward. Passion and fire, determination, focus, brilliance. It lets us shine and it brings us to our subconscious public arena self. And that's the tower. The tower here, it says destruction, enlightenment, release, and instruction, enlightenment, release. It's like something had to fall in order for us to stand, in order for us to truly see, in order for us to move forward in such brilliance, in such wisdom, in such beauty. The tower is not a bad card. It is an intense card. It can be for 16 years, things have fallen apart. It can be that we hadn't seen, you know, that what we had, that what we had, that what we were building wasn't supposed to be. And this is divinity throwing us out of our comfort zone and saying, where do you stand now? What do you need? What do you want? Where are you heading? What is important? And that, that becomes the game changer. All right. All right, Leo. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity of this time. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you.